Hello, guys. Welcome to the No Excuses Show, episode number 45. I am Eva Eckert and I am your host. So thank you so much for showing up today and participating in this episode. Are you looking to create a better discipline, energy, and confidence in your life so you can stop making the excuses and take massive action in your mind, body, and business nutrition so you can become healthier, happier, and more congruent with your mission? That's what the show is all about. And this show is for everyone, for the guys and the girls, for those of you who are a badass or for those of you who want to become a badass and learn how to apply the no excuses mindset in the main areas of your life, mind, body, and business. And of course, relationships, because we discuss relationship. In this show, I share like real life situations, experiences, ideas on how the no excuses mindset helped us, the Freak family, right, to achieve uh, a success. We run multi different companies here in California, and we want to share with you the way of life. So by having me as your accountability coach, you will discover the self-discipline. You will finally discover the internal motivation that all of us need nowadays. I know that you're going to agree with me. So let's hop right in. Thank you so much, guys. I see you popping on my screen, showing up today. This is awesome. So episode number 45. Today, we'll be discussing how to avoid gaining weight during holidays, because as we know, today is December 1st. This is a time of the year when a lot of people gain weight. And that's why specifically I chose that topic, because I know that a lot of you will have a trouble. So first of all, I want to ask you guys a question before we jump into it. What was your previous experience with holidays? Like think about previous year. What happened in the month of December? What maybe happened even in the month of November already? Like what do you think and remember about that month? Did you gain weight? Uh, ask yourself a question. Ask almost like interview yourself. Do I, did I have a hard time during the holidays? Did I feel overwhelmed? Did I feel stressed? And most of all, ask yourself a question. What do I want? Because that's important. That's important, guys. Like a lot of you want to lose weight. A lot of you want to uh, look better. A lot of you want this. But behind that want, there is always work. Okay? That no matter what, we, uh, what we're doing in life, the success is a matter of hard work. And once we understand this, it's going to be easier for us to take the steps. So if you want to be sluggish, if you don't want to have an energy, obviously that's, that's the outcome of eating poorly during those months, but it can be different. And that's why I thought we should discuss this and uh, we should really have a plan on how to battle this, because if this was something that bothered you last year, it should be different this year. So imagine in the month of December, like uh, going back in time when we had the physical centers in New York, we had two of uh, the peak physical locations in New York, very successful. We trained over 25,000 people and changed their lives. Some people in, the, in that month would gain five to 20 pounds. And the reason why we would do a zero pound challenge is to prevent the gain, them gaining weight. And it was a great challenge. If some of you are a part, were a part of Peak and you did that challenge, you know what I'm talking about. It was a fun challenge because it was all about finding that balance. And that's what it is. So obviously, through, through month of December, like you have a lot of parties, you have a lot of get together with friends. You get all these invitations from these, um, um, you know, organizations that you belong to. Like, I go and make cookies with my with my kids, right? There is so much on your schedule right now. So I wanted to ask you, like, think about this for a moment. How many parties or get-togethers do you have scheduled this month? And this is important. Do you have more than five? Do you have maybe six, seven? So think about it. Seven get-togethers, that's like a week worth of going out and meeting with people. And if during this time, 
you're gonna eat bad you're gonna be drinking alcohol you're gonna be eating sweets and eating unhealthy that's a whole week now look at this a whole week whole week of eating bad that means that you have to train hard for a whole month to get rid of what you just consumed and how you were during that time that's crazy amount of time and a lot of people don't realize this because you go to those parties you meet you you know it's a time of the season that it's beautiful it's uh, I love Christmas and I love the month of December uh, it brings so many memories of me being a kid from Poland and getting together with my family and I absolutely love it and I, I'm sure that you love it too and for those of you who are started celebrating Hanukkah we have all different holidays right but you need to be really aware and conscious about the consequences that's uh, that's happening after right especially if you are a person that is dissatisfied with the way how you look so going back of that week of bad eating that is going to take the whole month for you to burn it off imagine if you eat for a bad for the whole month of December that means that you need to spend weeks and weeks after to get yourself out of the hole and a wrong month sometimes it takes few months to to really uh, burn it off so you gotta understand like one day will take a whole week or more to burn it off one week will take a month or month but one month takes several months and if you understand this, if you're going to become a little bit conscious, more conscious and aware, you're going to be like, you know what? You're right. I cannot do this because the consequences are painful. And the pain after it creates, you know, you, you, you feel so uncomfortable at one point. You want to start working out that you start losing weight. That's why so many people create these January 1st big goals of losing weight but why not to start earlier why not to start thinking okay i'm gonna be on that preventive side i need to do something now so i don't dig, dig myself in this hole again what do you think guys i would love to hear from you and your experiences with holidays and what happened and what happened to you if you if you love holidays but because of eating bad stuff and bad food you got yourself into the big, the big hole this year. Why don't we take the steps? So bear with me because I'm going to give you the tools that's going to help you to not gain weight during the holidays. So make sure that you're staying with me because I'm going to show you what we need to do. So uh, obviously for those of you who are in a great shape, can handle a little bit access of food throughout the holidays that's a different story especially if you are a trainer you're a coach you know what to do that's a different story but for those of you again who have been having a struggle last year and maybe till now you are still dealing with your decisions that you made in December it's time to really stop and pause so hello Pam I see you guys Clement Alice that's awesome so I'll give you an example of what our family and how we deal with it and what I do, what I do exactly in my personal life, how I do this. Uh, obviously, I'm a coach. I'm a mind and body business coach. And uh, through tr being a coach for over 20 years and coaching people with their mind and body, how to eat, how to exercise and how to stay healthy for life, those are almost like the case studies taken from experiences it's amazing how much we gain how much knowledge we gain over the course of so many years so those of you who have been having that problem obviously this is a problem with discipline and it's crazy as it sounds but it's easy it's easy it's not hard to do this guys so it's good that today is December 1st we can have the plan for the upcoming weeks so I want to challenge you this month, those of you who especially gain some weight, if you gain more than five pounds last year, this challenge is for you. And the challenge will be on the discipline, meaning learning to say no. So imagine all these parties, all these uh, trips to your friends and getting together 
and eating, drinking wine, and doing all other things. Go and go to the party, but say no to the food. What I mean by this, you're going to be like, okay, but how am I going to do this? I'm just going to go and I'm not going to eat. There is a way. You be prepared. First of all, you should eat before you leave the house. You should leave with some shakes and protein bars, just in case there is nothing good. If there is something good there, you can eat, obviously, salads, uh, you can eat chicken, fish, whatever you can eat, as long as it's healthy, not deep fried, or have a huge, like, heavy sauce. So that's very important. But the best way is always, okay, I'm going to eat some good food at home so I have more control over it. But preparation is the key. Taking stuff with you. And when I go to these parties, let me tell you, I recently joined, like, a mom's club. And and the, the whole, when we got there, it was nothing more than a festivity of bad stuff for people like literally bagels and and chips and 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 cupcakes and can be different and if you host an event don't buy this stuff buy something healthy show people other way because we are all influencers you can it can by you doing this not only you inspire yourself but inspire others so choosing a healthy fruits and choosing a healthy option, maybe serving a shake for someone would be better. So keep that in both sides. You know, there's both sides to the coin. You as you going and you as you serving. Don't encourage people to unhealthy eating. That's very, very important. And be intentional. Now pay attention to this. What I do when I go to these parties, I literally set an intention myself and almost like a promise to myself, I will not eat that. I will not eat or drink a coffee with a creamer. Or I don't. if I don't want to drink alcohol, I will say I will not drink alcohol. I'm very, very intentional. I set up my mind. I put it in my head, the line, like I will not do that. And I see drive 3,800 miles, recent bars came in handy. Yes, Pam, that's right. That's what we do. So, guys, let me tell you how intention plays a major role in your life. When you get up in the morning, I'm going to give you a morning idea of the morning routine when you get up. When Steve always says, when my feet hit the floor, right, he jumps out of the bed. When I get up, I say, obviously, there are mantras that we repeat to ourselves to spark the day, to spark the energy. Because remember, we are working energies. You create the energy and you receive energy. Remember this. Like, think about it. Why sometimes in the room of, of people that are quiet, you, you almost feel like you're quiet. The same way. You, we, are, we are made out of energy. We are light. So spread the good light. Share the good light, all right? So let me tell you, Ken Burke, hello. <clears throat> so um, in the morning, think about in the segments of your life, what because we have routines. We get up, we brush our teeth, we eat, we go to work. Maybe you take kids to activities. So there are certain segments of your life that are on repetition, right? They're repetition. Like, think about this. They're like parts of your life. So think about as the day unfolds, that everything is going right, that you're gonna have a, that you're not gonna be stuck in traffic, that you're gonna eat healthy breakfast, that you're gonna have a great conversation with your kids today, that you're gonna have a great dinner with your spouse, or maybe going out on a date, that the day is going to be awesome. Intentionally setting up this thing, and I'm telling you, the day is gonna be better. But if you get up groggy, sluggish, and just negative, how the day can be good? Like. How the day can start good if you're going to have already a bad attitude. So set up the intentions. And the intentions and the stuff always help me. But there is also one trick. If I am on a defense, like kind of 50% like this, 50% like this, I'm going to be undecisive. And then what's going to happen? Somebody else can kind of push me because of the peer pressure of others, I might lean into something else, but I don't want that. I want to have a control in my life, and you can too. So if you care about your the way how you look and how you feel, and you have so many different parties this month, 
choose maybe one party that you can fully enjoy yourself and eat and drink whatever you want. But the rest, just be mindful, guys, because it's not worth it what's happening after. Your pants cannot be buckled. The suit feels too tight. The dress is just, you're not going to put your sexy dress on a New Year's Eve. And is that worth it? No. So, so please do this. Be intentional and like set it, set, say it, what you about to do when you go somewhere. Like promise, make a promise to yourself. Okay. And then also, because when we go to parties, like think about it. You are one and you decide, okay, I'm not going to do, do this. And there will be a bunch of people around you. And what happens in situations like this? There is a peer pressure. I'm going to give you a fun example. I don't know if you've ever watched this. I don't know. I, I'm, there was one of the personal training self-development courses that we watched, I think. Uh, and it, let me tell you, it, it's a funny example of what the peer pressure, pressure can do. So they did a study. There was a per, purposely done experiment on people. People were waiting in a waiting room before going to the doctor. Of course, there were actors. Nobody knew that they were actors. So the new people that were coming, they were regular people that were coming to see the doctor. Thank you. So, so uh, as, as, as the group was sitting in the front of the doctor's office, every few seconds, there was a sound played. And on the sound, all these people would stand up like this. They would stand up. So the newcomers, look how the pressure of the people work. So the newcomers, the real people that are coming to the doctor, imagine this scenario. All of them sitting, the new people coming, they sit down, like you're sitting in front of the office, you're waiting for your turn. And then out of there is a sound. And like 10 people get up, stand up straight, it sits down. It's almost like a robotic thing. So the people look around, they're like, what the hell is happening? What is going on? What is this? Few times after, let me tell you what's happening. Nobody, this person, nobody's asking questions. They just look at everybody and they start getting up like the other group. Like the other group that was standing up, they joined the rhythm, they joined the team, they joined the pressure. Wouldn't you question this? Wouldn't you question this? Why are these people getting up? So a new person comes in and they see other people standing up and they do the same thing. So it's like an ongoing process that peer pressure puts so much pressure on you and you start acting like them. And let me tell you, a lot of people, sadly, sadly, not only that it's the pressure, but a lot of people, sadly, act and creates the life from the victim stage. Poor me. The life is just happening to me i have no control guys all of you have to stop i know that we talk about a lot of in these shows but to understand that it's life is happening for you it's here for you and you play a main role in this this is your movie it's movie about you so you decide to take a part in it and you need to create your character that's how i see it do you agree? Maybe yes, maybe not. But to play from a victim stage is, 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 is not growth. Okay. There's always something bad. There's all, I'm not saying because bad stuff happens in life. I went through trauma and, and was raised without a father. And it was, I went through very difficult times in my life, but they, there are awakening moments and the life brings them to you and you need to be very aware to catch on them. If not, you're always going to be playing that victim set and that's what it is. It's like not being able to control this month, that's going to be totally from a victim point of view and I don't want that for you. So knowing what's happening this month, that's why I created this video and I figured this is a perfect time of the year to give you this, that you have a control, that you are powerful enough to decide, to say no, to not be afraid to say to someone that you don't want something, that thank you, and you sharing that, you sharing to them what you want to do and what you want to eat and how you want to behave. Not allowing people to put that pressure on you because people will put that on you. And you need to be strong enough to fight it 
and to feel and and con control what you believe. And that's super important, guys. So I would love to hear from you um, what you think about this and and how you're going to be battling this month. Or maybe you feel so strong right now that you're like, you, you know what? I got this. I went through hard time. You might be at this point I, that you went through hard time. And this was such a painful experience that create a growth in you, meaning you will not repeat this again. Because remember, painful experiences in our life create a lot of growth if, if you really think about it. And they can be endless, endless ideas of how, 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 this, how this happened, right? So now we know to set the intentions, to not allowing the peer pressure, to being prepared, right? And now you know the steps. So either write them down or listen to this, to this show again so it's going to stick into your head. And remember that one day of bad eating, that's over a whole week of trying to burn the calories. One week, that's over one month. So that's why it's so, uh, it's so hard for people to catch on this because you just enjoying yourself through the process. You go and you, 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 you being invited and you wanted to do it, but think of, and, and then out of nowhere, you, you're bursting out of your dress or your pants. So enjoy the things and think about when you disconnect yourself from food. There is another important part, I think. When you disconnect your food and you realize that food is just for energy and you're going there for these meetings to get to know people, ask them good questions, ask them good questions. Remember that. Interact with them, learning about them then you feel so empowered. And when you leave a meeting like this, you're going to be like, wow. You're going to feel so good that you're going to you're gonna feel unstoppable. Oh, Pamela is asking me about fasting. Yes, I, I, you mean like before, before a party? Before a party or just in general to do fasting? So... Yes, some people do that. And if if you feel okay, if you don't have any kind of, I would say, problems with your health, some of you would have to consult the physician before doing so. Anytime. Then yes, fasting, it can be good. However, I, I've done it, but it's more for, for a challenge. Even though there are so many benefits, I even did one of the shows. But if some people do this purposely, constantly to lose weight, but they don't take care of the other aspects of their life, like workouts and nutrition constantly, this can hurt you. And can hurt, that's what I think, can hurt a person, a fasting, someone that's been having a very difficult relationship with food, like someone that's been either anorexic or, you know, a person that totally is because that's anorexia nervosa. That's, that's, that's a disease. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can call it a disease, but that's a problem. I, I, I was like this as a child and someone that does not eat all day long and they are already overweight. Because what happens is you create, you create on top of what you're already dealing with another stage of not eating. So your body is not burning the fat, which I have behind me. Look at this. This thing is always next to me. Don't think that I just chopped someone and took the fat out. This is thick, but that's how our fat looks like. It's jiggly. It's nasty. So this can create additional problems. But for someone, maybe like you, Pam, that wants to do like a fasting for a day, drink a lot of water, and, 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 and do this so you can be of control of your mind. Because you are very fit, 
you looking good, you can do this. And you know what I like, what, what I realized when I did that fasting, there was actually in my show previously, during the first, first thing, fasting day, I fall asleep in sauna. I was so tired because I was not really drinking coffee. I allowed my system to reboot myself. So I fall asleep in sauna. I fall asleep in front of the computer. It was these, all these different things that happened to me. And I did it to challenge myself and to say when I was hungry that I'm in control of my stomach. That this is just an organ that it's rumbling, but it sends the signals to, you know, the, the brain sends the signal to me that I am hungry. So this was more of like a challenge. But again, if somebody, like if we've had people at the gym, they were over 300 pounds, 200 pounds, and most of these people were not eating. And this is what I'm speaking from an experience as a coach for many, many years. We would have people that would literally not eat, and they would eat one one person a day. These people were overweight. I would put them on a regimen every two, three times a day. We would give them a list what to eat, what to avoid. Out of nowhere, nine months later, this person is 100 pounds lighter. So you go figure. I don't think that it's for everyone. I think you can get hurt not knowing what you're doing if you, uh, and your body can even store more fat that to lose. So there is a very fine line. Uh, how I felt, I had a great energy and that was just for me to do, to prove myself that I can do it. Uh, do I need to do this? Um, maybe sometimes when you, when you guys go out and you feel like you eat too much and you feel you're naturally the next day, what you do, like think about it. Like when you eat too much in the morning, when you get up, you're going to feel like, I don't want to eat anything because your body is still digesting everything. It's still slow from the night before. So you're naturally postponing the meals. Look how naturally your system dictates what you should be doing, right? So it's a form of fasting too, I would say. Uh, and, and, and that's what, what was being done. Another form of saving calories from a, a place, things like that is just exactly fast before you go. However, I'd rather want you to do it from a point of being conscious, aware, intentional, and being prepared and knowing where you came from last year. So this year will be different. And that's my whole idea of this show today to prevent you guys because uh, deal, knowing how people deal with the pain of uh, gaining so many so many pounds during this time. I've had a girl one day, we were doing a, a consultation and you know what she told me? She told me that every year between her late birthday and, and Christmas and holidays, between November and December, she gains 25 pounds each year. Then it takes her seven months to lose it. So look what a cycle. She almost like waits for November to be able to binge. And that's what she told me. I binge and eat for two months. And then I keep on losing next year for a few months. I mean, this is a vicious cycle. This is not a healthy way of life. Absolutely not. And I would never recommend you, recommend to anybody something like this. So she, she, what she did, she trained her mind to do this over and over again in such a healthy way. And so many of us do this the same thing. Like, I want you to pay attention. Some of you are looking for this time. Some of you are waiting for December to binge and to overeat, not knowing why you're really doing it. What is the process behind it? Why? So... What can teach us? I mean, a lot of a lot a lot of time doing meditation and asking yourself a question. There is so many deep questions that you can ask yourself and find out why you do what you do. And of course, if you are a person that absolutely needs discipline and create the energy in your life and become self improved individual, contact me. We can schedule a coaching session. Uh, you guys can click on the link that I will post it later. This will be on my feed, of course, on Instagram. You can schedule a consult, a free coaching call with me. And let's get you going because this is a month that you should be thinking how to implement new habits in your life and what you can do differently next year that you've done this year. And this is the month that we and the freak will be sharing with you certain things that going and looking deeply into your year 
will open up your eyes. Were you accountable for your actions or were you not? What can you do different this year that you have not done this year? Those are good things, guys, because in life it's all about growth. It's all about getting better and becoming a better version of yourself. So thank you so much, guys, for watching me. This was episode number 45. You can check me out on YouTube, of course. I post these every week. You see them. You see the clips of these episodes. And most importantly, I hope that you get something out of it. I will talk to you guys soon. No excuses.